Hey everyone, how's life been treating you? Have you ever seen a movie with an actor you could have sworn was related in some way to another much more successful and more well-known actor? Well I have, and I'll be damned if Mr. Logan Marshall Green doesn't look a hell of a lot like my all-time favorite man crush, the absolutely unrivaled Tom Hardy. The first time I saw him was in Prometheus, in which he sucked, big time. Which is no surprise probably, because most of that movie sucked, so it's not like there was any good performance wasted on it or anything like that. Ah, crap. Here in The Invitation, however, he is much better. He actually manages to carry this very emotional roller coaster type of a film quite efficiently. And he manages to create that emotional connection between the film and the viewer. I mean, I genuinely cared about this guy. I think I would have reacted the same way and would have felt the same way about everything going on. And what exactly is going on, you ask? Well, the film starts out with Logan Marshall Green's character, along with his girlfriend, heading to a dinner party to where they were invited to by his ex-wife, who he hasn't seen for over two years. The thing there is to know about this house in which this dinner party is being held is that this former couple used to live here and that sometime in the past, something quite tragic and traumatic happened here, which might or might not have been the cause for their separation. Now I don't like parties in general, but that's a fucking dinner party I would never go to. But you know, this guy, he's a nice guy, he's trying to cope with his past, so he accepts the invitation. But upon arrival, he immediately regrets it, and you can see why. Because this party is fucking awkward. I mean, everyone is behaving so mysteriously, everyone is overly nice, overly good-mannered, it's like they were hiding some sort of agenda. Some of them like start sharing these very crazy and dark stories, they start playing like these very awkward kind of truth and dare type of games, it's nuts. And of course this doesn't help the increasing paranoia our guy feels, and he starts to act kind of crazy himself, and you don't really know if it's warranted or not for a while. But of course being a psychological thriller, shit does hit the fan one way or another at a certain point, but I'm not telling you, mm mm, I'm not fulfilled. This film is truly an emotional roller coaster. It manages to give you just the right amount of information when needed, while simultaneously giving you false alarms. Because you see, we are with this guy, we are with this main character all the time, we are seeing everything through his eyes. And every time you think something bad is going to happen, and then when it doesn't, you're blaming him, you know? You're saying that, wow, oh, fuck man, you're way too paranoid, come on. But at the same time, you are patting him on the back because you understand him, that's exactly the way you would feel if you have gone through what he is going through. And it creates this really unsettling situation because you're at a party, you're supposed to be having fun, feeling good about yourself, catching up with people you haven't seen in a long time, but you just want to get the hell out of here as fast as possible. Kind of like my life in a nutshell. <laughs> God damn it, I'm depressed. This film really works because it has an excellent sense of no bullshitting. This is a movie that knows it's not trying to be anything extremely deep, while it also has confidence and knows it is a little bit more than just your standard thriller or horror movie. About how different people's lives are impacted by the same or very similar tragic events. And the toll it can take on these people's sanity. And the different ways they try to trick themselves, as well as of course everyone around them, that certain emotions, certain feelings they might have had are eliminated, which unfortunately many times is not the case. Like I said, the film really doesn't bullshit. It roller coasters you into its plot fairly quickly and it knows exactly what's the right amount of exposition to give in order for us to understand and care, what's the right amount of flashbacks to use in order for us to not be left in the dark. Even the dialogue I felt was kind of sparse. I mean it's a very slow moving movie, these characters don't really say that much but they say just enough for you to be able to like understand them, for you to be able to say that okay I figured you out, I figured out your personality. You're very suspicious to me but I know the type of person you are. And even during the end, during the last act, when surprisingly enough it does become this kind of more generic thriller, it never really feels like overkill, you know? It never really feels like it turned into a totally different movie, like some movies tend to do. So yeah, good thriller, dark, depressing, very depressing actually, this movie, this movie kind of teared me up. And I also liked how it worked visually, everything has this kind of reddish tinge to it, which I think makes total sense for reasons you will have to find out when you see the film, of course. I salute you and I will see you later with other reviews. Goodbye, folks.